Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Sing in my life. In my life. Have your way. Have your way. You're the Holy Ghost. Holy So my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me you are the holy ghost the holy ghost oh Just the voices. Take your place tonight. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Lord Jesus, take your place. In the midst of your people, we have nothing to say until you speak to us. We ask you tonight in the name of Jesus, take your place. Only your presence brings freshness. Only your presence brings illumination. Oh, take a hold of my spirit, my soul, my body, my intellect. I align, I align, I yield myself. Take a hold of my body, my spirit, my soul, my faculties. May they come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. May they come under the influence of the mighty one. Sing in the spirit. Make melodies from your inner man. Oh, 
Just keep worshiping. you see that we keep singing like this is because the Holy Spirit is doing something whenever he stands you you hook on to what he is doing and you don't rest please help me sound yeah. just a song that I heard in my spirit now oh, oh, oh. Say whoming.
Just the voices. Yeah. 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 My goodness. This is a sound in the spirit, I tell you. Yeah. 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 It's like a frequency, a radio frequency. Yeah. Yeah. prophecies in this place yeah. of the Lord is saying my glory will I share with no man I share my glory with no man this honor no man takes to himself I will do a walk in your midst say the spirit of the Lord and it will be swift it will be swift I will do a walk in you and it will be swift I will make you the tabernacle of my glory say the spirit of the Lord I will do a walk in you and it will be swift. I will do a walk in you and it will be swift. Through the ashes and through the pain, I birth my glory in you, say the Spirit of the Lord. Through the ashes and through the pain, I birth my glory in you. Through the ashes and through the pain, I bring upon you new mantles. I bring upon you new graces. Yeah. prophecy is falling on people right now right now right now I see it like like a cloth like a garment is a spiritual garment is falling on people right now the spirit of prophecy yeah. 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 even outside I see it like a garment falling on people yeah. prophecy is like a garment men and women are wearing that garment right now
this is a prophetic word to the worship team new songs from heaven say the spirit of god new songs upon our worship team new songs upon our worship team is coming like mantles upon your spirit it's like radio waves into your spirit man worship team radio waves you will bet songs in the spirit 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 songs in the spirit you will hear them in the night time as you sleep you will hear them in the morning you will hear the voice of angels they will sing those songs and you will pick those signals they are songs of new seasons they are melodies of victory they are songs of triumph they are songs that speak the language of victory they are songs that empower the saints they open them to new dimensions in the spirit they are songs of the lamb they are songs of the lion they are songs from heaven they are sounds of the spirit yeah. I'm announcing to you that seasons of victory are ahead the Lord says I'm announcing to you that seasons of victory are ahead beyond the shadows are new realms of victory beyond the pain are new dimensions of triumph beyond the shadows are new levels of grace for you will sing this song in the days to come say the spirit of the Lord they are sounds of victory only the victorious can sing this song they are melodies of triumph they are melodies of victory say the spirit of the lord yeah. 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 says remember not the former things nor consider the things of old weep not for I bring you new joy say the spirit of the Lord I bring to an end your season of weeping I bring to an end your season of weeping you may not know how it will happen but I will move by my wisdom say the spirit of the Lord you do not need to know how it will happen for it will be swift and it will be strange say the spirit of the Lord you may not know how it will happen but it will be a move of the spirit and like the twinkling of an eye i will put a melody upon your lips a song of victory a song of victory a song of victory yeah. say unto you remember not the former things nor consider the things of old forget about the pain of the past for the glory that is before you is greater than the pain of the past it has been a season of birthing said the spirit of the lord have i not said as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son you have been in a season of birthing the pains are for a reason the pains are building strength in you to contend with the seasons of glory that are ahead 
Weep not, my child, say in the Spirit of the Lord. Weep not, for the lamentations of yesterday will be a sound you will hear no more in your destiny. For the lamentations of yesterday will be a sound you will hear no more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rejoice for your salvation, draw it now. Say in the spirit of the Lord, rejoice for your salvation, draw it now. Rejoice for your salvation, draw it now. I say again, it will be swift. It will be swift. Like the twinkling of an eye. It will be swift. Yeah. rise from your spirit go ahead make those melodies to him in the spirit let the melodies rise it's an incense of worship it's an incense of worship hallelujah i see the angels of the lord chariots fighting battles this is what i see in the realm of the spirit i see battles contentions i see a mighty warfare going on in the realm of the spirit a warfare for the new levels i see the arsenals of hell being torn down and i hear the saints with tears in their eyes shouting the song of the lamb and the song of victory. Just keep soaking in the glory. There is warfare going in the realm of the spirit. Don't think you are wasting your time. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Breathe. 
will worship you. Creation will worship the nation will worship creation just the voices the nations the nation will worship Creation will worship. Creation will worship His Majesty. Will worship. Sing it. The nations will worship. Creation will worship. Will worship. Creation. Creation will It's unto you, O oh God. It's unto you. Let this rise as an incense of worship. mighty presence of God in this place there is a strong manifestation of the spirit of prophecy many of you will begin to prophesy 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 it's a strong unction of the spirit it's not the programming of the flesh it's by the strength of the spirit yourself 
that all you get in God's presence is just the word, worship, teaching, then you share the grace. You must always come into God's presence expecting Him to move in any way and to do anything. Believe me, you may not know the kinds of activations that are happening to people right now in this place. See, church is not designed just to be a place where you come and sit down and watch people and laugh. There are times that all you need is to come and press into an encounter. That you step out of that meeting and all of a sudden your sensitivity, something has happened. All of a sudden you find out that the burdens are lifted. All of a sudden you find out that the chains are broken. All of a sudden you find out that the power that comes from the throne does something to your life. This is what his presence does. See? That all of a sudden, in that atmosphere, when the spirit of prophecy, the Bible says the testimony of Jesus, every time the true spirit of prophecy comes into a place, all of a sudden, the spirit of God meeting the needs of people, touching people, challenging people, opening them up, explaining to you your encounters of the secret place showing you why the things that happen happen giving meaning to your encounters this is the only way church will not be boring yeah. Yeah. Listen, all I'm seeing in the spirit is light, light falling on people. That's all I'm seeing. It's an illumination, strong impartation of light. That's what is happening all over the building. God is opening the eyes of men, giving explanations. For some of you, the light that is coming is direction, strange direction by the spirit. Some of you, this light that is coming is answered prayers. That's the answer to prayers. Coming as that light from the throne. Listen, let me tell you something. Many of us have robbed the Holy Spirit from finding expression. Some of these songs you see me coming, bringing from the Spirit. Many of us, God has been wanting to pass through you. But this rigidity we put, there is, there is a sense of religion. I am busy trying to make money, trying to read books, trying to be successful. We, our spirits are not malleable enough for the Holy Spirit to pass through us. The restraint is too much. That's why we don't get the sound. That's why our discernment is very low. Because we are busy. It takes, it takes staying in the present. Let me tell the truth. You will never touch certain frequencies in the spirit. When you are busy around trying to combine spirituality and many other things. The presence of God is a full time assignment. You must stay. Stay until the sound comes. Stay until the melodies come. Stay until the power comes. For when he comes, he comes with light. 
for when he comes he comes with ease for when he comes he comes with illumination many of you have been praying oh lord take me to a new level it's not just by prayer stay in the presence stay in the glory that's the key that's the secret it's not just moving around no the glory doesn't just fall overnight when you stay your spirit man begins to acclimatize to the frequency of the spirit that's how it works it's not a hit and run thing you just rush and come out and then you want to hear with accuracy then you want his glory to flow it doesn't work like that there is a there is a staying there is a staying i tell you it's a law you must stay The church has learned to hurry God and we are hurrying the glory of God out of our lives there are many of you here listen when you started out with God you had the time and the staying power but I don't know what it is that has happened God is challenging us that secret place is now a strange place for many of us we are busy doing ministry we are busy trying to make a living. We are busy trying to move around. The church has lost the art of the secret place. The secret place is not a place. It's a place where you stay. Like a waiter. Stay until his glory comes. And then when his glory comes, there is a signature upon your life. Undeniable. The secret place. Is the place of power the secret place is the place where you have a message if God does not sit upon you with his glory you have no message you can talk it's not about Rema it's about the presence that follows it you can preach all you can but there is a glory this is a testament of his visitation upon your life that's what creates impact that's what breaks chains I like you to pray and say Lord show me your glory greater levels of your glory please pray expose me to that realm superior dimensions of your glory I have tasted of your glory I have seen what your grace can do but Lord there is a desperation within my spirit to taste of something tangible hallelujah hallelujah please sit down if you can for those who can sit there will be many impartations. The spirit of prophecy is strong in this place tonight. Some of you will never recover from tonight's meeting. I tell you, you will not even know what is happening to you. It's an encounter. Listen, listen. If you're a man of God in this place, I submit to you. You are wasting the time of God's people if you cannot convey the presence to that atmosphere. Yeah. That's how habits are broken. That's how chains are broken. That's how impartations happen. It's not just by laying on of hands. How many people can you lay your hands on? Let the glory come and there is transformation. Let the glory come and something is happening in people. Let the glory come and testimonies, sicknesses. Many of you are sitting down right now and sicknesses will just disappear. No, it can't stand the glory. Prayer lives have been revived different dimensions of the spirit 
that's why the place is called koinonia it's not a place of discussion it's an atmosphere of encounter Lord, let nothing restrain your hand in the midst of your people. Let nothing restrain your hand. Don't rob God from finding a vessel in you. Don't rob God from finding a truly anointed vessel in you. See, let me tell you something. If you follow these rubbish people are doing of just visiting God's presence to come and receive breakthrough and prosperity and power and rush back, you will never find God that way. Please believe me when I tell you this. God is not an object you use. You see that? There are some of us, our gifts are dormant for a very long time. Very long time. That press in the spirit to activate you listen it's an anomaly when you remain in the same spiritual level for a very long time something is wrong and when you are rising it's obvious everybody knows that there is a transition some of us are in the same position for a very long time because we are giving god barely enough see that there are some of us our dreams have ceased our visions have ceased. Our encounters have ceased. Our passion for his glory has ceased. Listen, every time the experience you used to have with God ceases, something stopped it. It never stops by default. Are we together now? There are many of us, you used to see things before they happen. Right now, it has dried up out of nothing because you are trying to look for a wife or look for a husband. Hallelujah. Dry up. There's nothing there again. No power. No grace. All these things we keep making noise around within church. One person falls down. One person falls down and we jump around. That's nonsense. There are higher dimensions. There are superior levels in the spirit. Beyond calling names and phone numbers. There is the spirit, not the gift of prophecy. There is the very spirit of it. The very operation of the prophetic realm. Where people receive testimonies of Jesus without you speaking any message. The spirit of prophecy. Men live with encounters they cannot explain. No matter how hardened you are, when you come into this atmosphere, something must surrender. That's what happens when his presence comes. You cannot change men by the excellency of persuasions. No. It doesn't work that way. The presence. That's what brings transformation. The presence. That's what brings change. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's only a price that very few desire to pay. Because we like things cheap. We like things easy anything that commits us we do not want we want results but we hate process oh we want to be mightily used you want to stand and see the glory of god move around brother there is a price it's not a gift it's a reward it's a reward for diligence it's a reward for surrender it's a reward for total yieldedness i used to hear benny Hinn say it total yieldedness that's the price for the anointing. Total yieldedness. Not half-hearted yieldedness. How many musicians are here? You have not brought one song from the spirit. It's, it's, a, it's an indictment on your call. It's an indictment of, on your gift. There are melodies in the spirit like waves. But there is a frequency with which your spirit must rise to. And then you will capture this thing. 
the, the level of the sophistication of your spirit is the level to which you will capture. Many of us, our prayer lives have died, gone cold, gone cold, gone cold. You only pray until you feel tired. See, let me tell you why many of us, our prayer lives are not effective. We are only praying to justify prayer. You don't pray for the purpose of touching realities in the spirit. You see that? Yes. At, you can pray and then after one hour or two hours, you can say, I have tried. That's a different, you are only praying to be better than somebody else. But there is a way you come with a desperation. And you pray that your spirit will make contact. If that contact happens in 10 minutes, you end. If that contact happens in five hours, you continue. See, it's not about religion. But it starts with a desperation. A desperation. A desire. The first message the Lord is communicating tonight is let there be a revival in your spirit, man. Get back those mantles and those gifts wherever you threw them. Let those dreams come alive again. Because in those dreams are the puzzles of your destiny. A little here, a little there. Before the year runs out, we're going to take a teaching on angels and the ministry of angels. You see, many of us have lost touch with spiritual reality. It's dangerous in this time and age to just move sensually. That the limit of your perception is a three-dimensional realm. You will be a victim of too many things. You've got to access a frequency that is higher than the material realm to supply you the strength and the illumination. Hallelujah. I challenge everyone here. There is more that God can do with your life if you will give him space. God is not a boyfriend. He's not a girlfriend. He's not looking for an affair. He wants a relationship. A very serious one. You give God an affair, you will get nothing out of it. If God is one of the many important things in your life, Believe me, you will never find him. Believe me, you will never find him. Listen, listen. This desire is not for men of God. This desire is for everyone who wants God. Don't you think that this bias is for pastors? No, no. The spirit of man was designed to only find satisfaction in his presence. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that pulls you on dry. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that pulls you on dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven. Sing it just one more time. Your presence, Your presence is heaven, is heaven to, me. to me. Your presence is heaven to Your me. Welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. God bless you especially for our visitors and many who are coming for the first time. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now today our meeting will be very different. We are going to take, I'll respond to a few questions and answers. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit put it in my heart. There are so many of us that have 
questions about the Holy Spirit, about encounters, spiritual growth. We'll give us an opportunity, maybe 30 minutes, and then I'll just minister to people. There are people who need to be ministered to. And so that's what we're going to do. Help us with another mic, please. Um, now I know that, please listen, many of us have questions, especially as regards intimacy, encounters, our spiritual lives. I'm trusting that God will grant grace. We'll use all the questions as a message and just communicate it. And please, I want you to feel free. Make sure that you ask questions that are applicable to our spiritual growth, not just something that is a bias. For some of us, it's something regards prayer, your prayer life, um, your word life. If there's no mic, you can, I can take one and then you can use this. Hallelujah. And so, um, because it's not only important to teach. There are some of us who have encountered certain challenges, maybe in the dispensing of the gift of the Spirit in our lives or anything that has to do with the Holy Spirit and intimacy and our spiritual growth. And I'm trusting that God will grant us um, a few minutes that's deliverance happening to her something is leaving her that devil of darkness leave her right now in the name of Jesus Christ there's one other lady with this same situation right now in this place the power of God is coming upon her this is a spirit that has been tormenting her Lord, wherever that lady is right now, I declare deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit. That lady is in the congregation here in the name of Jesus Christ. It's like fire that will come upon you. I judge that spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, I decree judgment. I pass a note of judgment to that wicked spirit that is bringing oppression. Praise the Lord. So, we're going to have little q and a and i'll respond and maybe uh, on one or two occasions we can allow one or two people to respond the questions will bless many of us because it will answer it will attempt to answer or solve some of the puzzles that are around our lives i don't want our spiritual lives to be um, without accuracy some of us may have been making the same mistake for a long time that's why we are not getting certain results spiritually. Hallelujah. Some of us may be pressing into God. For instance, there are people who press into God, but necessarily they find out that they are always backsliding. Not that they are sleeping around or doing anything immoral, but that staying power is like there is a spiritual meter. Every time you get to a dimension, it pulls you back. You are making progress, but the graph is not straight. It's like it goes up forces you down then you have to pray and fast your way there are many of us who do not know how to command strength in the spirit like a gentleman who uh, i think someone sent me a text i don't know if he's here he sent me a text in the afternoon um, and he said every time he's in the presence of god or anytime he's talking to people about the glory of god he starts yawning mysteriously like yawning and um, some of you are already nodding in agreement. It's happening to me too. What is the meaning of that? Are you yawning out demons? Are you absorbing the glory? What exactly is happening? So, um, please be smart. Don't be rude to the protocol people. Just walk as they direct you. We're going to have a few questions. Um, I will use the questions. Some of the questions will actually culminate to teachings. And I'll use the opportunity and just address things don't be biased make sure that you ask things that are relevant if your question is not relevant to our meeting we ignore it is that all right let's pray in one minute and say father speak to me go ahead and pray thank you jesus hallelujah praise the lord okay so um We'll come in threes. We'll just have the first three. They will stand. And then if there's any need. So let me see by wave of hands. I'll point people out. Okay. Number one, you can stand up. Come. Second, number two. And then um, let's have a lady figure. 
All right, that lady waving her hands in blue. Come quickly. Appreciate them as they come. Be smart. Tell us your name straight to the point. If you're wasting our time, please, we'll, we'll send you to your seats. Let me tell you in advance so you are not embarrassed. Go ahead. Turn to the congregation. God bless you. Go ahead. Okay. Good evening, sir. Is it working? Yes, sir. Um, good evening, sir. Thank you. Yes, bless sir. you. Yes, sir. My question is um, about visions. Visions? Yes, sir. What, what are they? Visions. Okay. Yes, sir. What are they? And are visions a sign of spiritual growth? That's um, like spiritual visions. Are they limited to a particular set of people? People who do not have them as frequently as... Are they growing? Yes. Are they, is it a sign that they are growing? Okay. I, I want to. Visions are a dimension of supernatural encounters, right? Um, there are many levels, dimensions, and types of supernatural encounters. Visions are just um, a dimension of supernatural encounters that affords a person an opportunity to access realities in the spirit it could be realities that reveal the past the present or the future you understand it could also be realities that expose that person to um, spiritual happenings now the whole goal of visions and, and i want us to pay attention the whole goal of visions and encounters any supernatural encounter is prophetic in its dimension are we together now so every time we talk of prophecy it's not just speaking any encounter that exposes you to access any realm beyond the physical is a prophetic dimension so in every man there is a prophetic dimension let me call it a latent prophetic dimension now those who are called into the prophetic or apostolic office the advantage of the apostolic office is that on the strength of that office you can work you should work in all the fivefold offices because it's an administrative office it heads and coordinates the spiritual activities are we together now but in a typical prophetic office by default the moment you there is an election of grace upon you inclined towards that prophetic office there are, it's like spiritual configurations by default. Are we together now? Now, your spiritual life and your spiritual growth can add to it. But anybody called into the prophetic office or any dimension of prophetic operations, by default, can be open to the realm of the spirit. That's why you can find people seeing visions who are not born again. Are we together now? Remember, he told Jeremiah the prophet, he said, while you were in your mother's womb, I had already called you and ordained you to be a prophet. Are, are we clear now? So visions and generally all supernatural encounters are a dimension of the prophetic. And the goal of visions, dreams, is illumination and direction. Sometimes also impartation. It gives you illumination, access to light and information. Right? Sometimes it gives you direction. But in many cases, it also comes with impartation. That's why some of us can have dreams, have visions, encounters. We don't exactly know why they came, but they leave residues of impartations. As we get up and begin our normal life, we see that certain possibilities in the spirit has been activated. And we may not know at what point it was activated. Like wisdom, like certain virtues. Do you understand? So now, but that does not mean, listen, if you are truly growing spiritually, right? Even if you are not called into the prophetic dimension or prophetic realm, if you are growing spiritually, the, the presence of God has a prophetic effect on everyone, whether you are a prophet or not. This is the reason why somebody on the strength of sheer intimacy with the Holy Spirit can access a level that will make him look like a prophet. But in reality, he's not a prophet. He's just one who has pressed into God to an appreciable dimension. It's like an aura of God's presence. Now, the Bible does not use visions and dreams to qualify spiritual growth. Although experience has shown us that as you progress spiritually, you will begin to um, get impulses. It's called spiritual perception. In fact, I preached a message on that. You can get it with the media after the service. Are we, are we understanding now? Because there are some of us here who are praying. We love God. 
But aside from dreams and maybe what we call intuition, what people like Kenneth Hagin will call the knowing of the spirit, we've not had any supernatural encounter as it were. And sometimes we get intimidated. And I think I must correct that. Because some of us get intimidated because someone is now talking and saying, um, um, Ogashe who saw something and he's prophesying. And he's saying, oh, I saw something. And you, you are standing frustrated. That you do not have visionary encounters in terms of um, encounters. You are awake, you are alive, and you are caught up. Or a picture comes before you. Or the audible voice of God. Or some kind of supernatural encounters. It does not mean you are not growing spiritually. Are we together now? There are two spiritual indices to measure spiritual growth. Number one is your degree of conformity into the image of the Christ. That's the first biblical sign of spiritual growth. So if you are born again and there is no transformation in you, you are not conforming to the image of Christ, believe me, your salvation is questionable. In fact, let me, let me press on this before we continue. There are many people who think they are born again. And, and please, I don't want you to doubt your salvation, but I must be sincere with you. There are many people who think they are born again. And I tell you the truth by the Lord, they are not. They are not saved. The meaning of that is if they die today, they are going to hell. Are we together now? Please, don't, don't trivialize salvation. Salvation is the, is the supplanting of the very life of God. In a mortal man are we together the bible says you are born of the incorruptible seed remember of the word of god so there is a seed the same way a man plants a seed in his wife what do you expect that seed to do there should be fertilization is that true and eventually as time progresses that seed right begins to produce so you cannot tell me you are born again listen that you are born again the life of christ is in you and you are exposed to the atmosphere of the spirit and progressively we do not see after a prolonged period of time evidences of conformity to the image of christ something is wrong with that salvation are we together now so it's very very important so that's one index the second index is your degree of comprehension the degree to which you are having understanding on the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. So that your degree of conformity, to what degree do I see Christ in you? In fact, Paul puts it this way. He said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. He was talking to people who were already saved. So conformity to the image of Christ and access to the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. These two will naturally produce empowerment, impartation, access to the anointing. Are we together now? So that's it about vision. God bless you. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, sir. Sir, I want to know... Uh, What's your name? My name is Oko Sampotensi. Okay, yes. When um, you, there is a signal that an attack is coming on your spiritual life and you, you pray against it, but then, actually, you are going down spiritually. Sorry, again? You're going down spiritually, your spiritual life. You are going down spiritually. Yeah, kind of, you have, an attack is coming on your spiritual life. And then you... Attack from hell? Construct your question pray, very logical so that... Pray, you, prayer life, for instance, is your going down. Your prayer life is going down. Yes. And then you, you, pray, you pray against it. Then a time comes that what the very incidents that causes you to go down finally happens... Although you prayed against it, and it, it happens to, um, you, you feel that, okay, you failed. And then the Spirit comes to um, encourage you that, as if it's, it, it, is, it was proposed by God. Okay, so what is the question? So now? my question now is, uh, when are, are those attacks actually, and after the attack, you grow higher. Are those attacks actually um, ingredients to, for you to grow spiritually, to live you the level a, you are? You mean a demonic attack? Uh, on your spiritual life, for instance. Okay, um, his, his question has many sides to it. I'm not getting exactly what he's asking, but if I understand you well, you mean your prayer life is going down? Yes. Are we together? Yes. And then what happens? There is a, there, there is even a, there is a knowing in you that... There, there that, is an attack. Yes. A demonic attack on yes, your life. Yes, yes. Okay. And then, for instance, there is, 
maybe a habit God has delivered you from. And then there is a knowing that um, it's coming back or something. The devil wants to bring it back. And you pray and you pray against it. Let it not be. Let it not be, Lord. And then it still happens. And then it happens. Then you feel like it's men. It's gone. Then there is an encouragement that as if this thing is proposed. And then after that, you feel a lifting higher. Okay. I think I get what you're saying. No, 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 no. It's not a habit. It's not proposed to lift you up spiritually. What you see is an interplay of your carelessness and the mercy of God and the grace of God. There are many things interwoven. So you don't justify that because you grew from it. It meant God brought it. Now, we must understand that there are different attributes of God that um, it is part of the love of God. Now, love in the spirit is not affection. Love in the spirit is a realm with many dimensions. There is a dimension of love called discipline. There is a dimension of love called judgment. There is a dimension of love called mercy. There is a dimension of love called justice. Are we together? That's why Paul says to know the length, the breadth, and he he gives love a dimension. So when we say the love of God comes to you, it can come as his goodness. It can, can come as his chastisement. Are we together? It can come as his mercy. Now you are a believer Number one, we have to examine what made your prayer life to go down. Right? There are two reasons why your prayer life can go down. Number one, it can be the natural fatigue that comes from the spirit and the flesh contending together. According to Galatians chapter 5 verse 16, it says, This I say then, walk ye in the spirit, and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh. Right? So it says the flesh lusted after the spirit, the spirit after the flesh, and there is a contention. You get up in the morning, I mean, there are ladies to resist, there is beer to cast away, there, there are all kinds of things to happen, there is bribery and corruption to run away from. At the end of it, after a while, it's like, it's like wear and tear. Your spirit can be fatigued. That's not backsliding. That's simply a tiring because of your faculties that help you interact with the spirit. At that point, the solution is a retreat. Isaiah 40 verse 31. Even the young men can be weary, they can faint, all right? Then, but they that wait upon the Lord. But in a situation where it is an attack, which often happens, there are three seasons where Satan attacks people. Number one, at the birthing of something new. The moment there is something new about to happen in your life, part of the many events that happen is a strange attack that has nothing to do with your spiritual life. You read the Bible and you find out it's not unusual. Right? Very, very important. There is always a strange attack. Revelations. I saw a mystery. A woman who was carrying a man child about to give birth to that child and a dragon came and stood waiting for the child to come so that she will eat. Now, Satan tries to stop you at the time of sowing your seeds. Any kind of seed. Spiritual seed. If he cannot stop it, He will try to stop the gestation period by bringing impatience, taking advantage of your human nature that hope deferred makes the heart weary. Are we together now? And if you cannot stop it, then he will wait for you at the point of harvest so that he will abort the harvest. These are the three seasons and stages of Satan's attack. So before you start ministry, look at that. He did it to Moses. Stage one, when Moses was about to be birthed and conceived. They wanted to kill all the people. So to abort the destiny from day one. Now that it did not happen, he wanted to implicate Moses and he caused Moses to kill somebody so that it would affect him, the process. And then eventually towards the end of his life, he used anger and stopped him from entering. So there are three stages of Satan's attack. Are we together? We see that even in the life of Jesus. Jesus about to be born, his star shines in the east. Wise men follow him, Herod wants to kill him. Are we together? Then later on again, we see that through the process, after his baptism, Satan comes to wait for him. And then he tries to jeopardize his destiny by telling him, I'll give you the kingdom, bow down. And since he refused, and then he tried and tried and tried, all through the lifetime of Jesus, Satan could not get him. And then the last stage was in hell. When Jesus was preparing to defeat all the cohorts of hell and come out, all the demons and the principalities were on him to force him to bow. And then he rose up 
And you know that when Jesus was about to resurrect, what happened? They paid some people to lie, even when he resurrected. He, they guarded the place, and when he resurrected, they paid some people. They said, go and lie, that the disciples came and stole his body. So we see that there are seasons. You can actually discern seasons where you know you are liable to attacks, except you do not have spiritual intelligence. Now, Satan, I'm using this, are, are we getting blessed? Is God speaking to us? Satan is not omniscient. There are three attributes that make God sovereign. Number one is his omnipresence. His ability to be everywhere. Satan is not everywhere. Job 1 verse 1. From whence comest thou? Later on you read, from running to and fro. God doesn't run to and fro. His eyes can see everything. The all-seeing eyes of God. Are we together now? Number two, his omniscience. His ability to know all things. Satan does not know all things. He works with information. That's why he uses human agents to probe into people. That's why Satan pursued prophets. Because he wanted to hear what God was telling them. Are we together now? Very important. And then number three, his omnipotence. His ability to have all power. Once have I spoken, twice have we heard that all power belongs to the Lord. Now, Satan does not have these attributes. Are we together so Satan can discern seasons of breakthrough in your life. And that season is usually communicated in the spirit by unusual angelic activities. Satan was once a cherub. And so he understands. Remember when Jacob slept, right? When you read Genesis 28, when Jacob slept, he saw a ladder. There were unusual activities happening. Are we together now? The same thing Jesus told Nathaniel in John chapter 1. He said, you will see many things you see the heavens open and all of that so what happens is that at a point where the devil sees that there are unusual activities or prophecy has revealed what god is about to do that's why when prophecy comes that's not the time to cross your leg paul spoke to his son timothy he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare with the prophecies because prophecy is an announcement it's an unveiling. The moment the voice of God prophetically spoke, John said, behold the lamb. And a voice said, this is my beloved son. Satan started chasing him. Are we together now? So when there is an attack, it usually is that God is, is trying to do something in your life and Satan is trying to raise a counter attack. At that point, if you understand the mysteries of the kingdom, there is a secret to tap into a higher supply of grace. Are you following me now? And that's the power of a retreat. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. They that wait. The moment you sense that there is a lot of boisterous activities in your life. And you will know it by the intuition of the spirit. Some of you will see it in dreams. Some of you will have it in visions. Some of you prophecies will come to you. And many of us who are used to rejecting prophecy. Now... Prophecy must not be exalted above the word of God. However, it's important to many times pay attention to it. Especially when it's coming from vessels that know God and are credible. It's important to pay attention. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. So, when there is an attack and it is a demonic attack, if it prevails over you, an attack is inevitable on the saints. And it's not a surprising thing. The surprise, however, is when Satan prevails. Are we together now? Because even in heaven there was war. The Bible said there was war in heaven. That, that dragon, Lucifer, he rose. An archangel, Michael, also rose. But Satan prevailed not. There was no place found for him and he was casted to the earth. And there was a lamentation. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. You know, Satan, that old serpent, he has come with anger and great fury. Are we together now? So if there is an attack, an affliction... The secret is prayer and it's in a secret place so if your prayer life died it's because you did not build momentum before that time are we together that's the reason why it is important for every believer to have what we call it's like a spiritual bank it's like an energy bank so your daily prayer the bible says redeeming the time that's the mystery there are two words that are used time in the greek there is chronos and there is kairos Kronos is the passage of time. Kairos is an opportune time or a set time. 
the Bible uses these two words in the book of Psalms. It said, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time, chronos, to favor her. Yea, the kairos, when you translate it to Hebrew, the set time. Are we together now? So, there is a set time, an opportune time, where major things happen between heaven. There is serious business between you and heaven. And at that time, the devil knows and he will launch attacks. So what you do is you build a spiritual fortification, both spiritual intelligence and capacity in the place of prayer. So that at such time, it will sustain you. The Bible says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, what was wrong? Your strength, your spiritual strength now is small. So if you fell in that attack, it's because your strength was small. Are we together? Let's assume, let's use something, maybe pornography. Are we together now? And it's something God had delivered you from. And you sense that the devil is trying to drive you again into porn, uh, pornography. Are we together now? And then you fell to it. That falling is not a test. That falling is not the furnace of affliction we are talking about. That you fell simply because your spirit did not sustain the strength and the energy to scale through. But then in the midst of it, the dimension of God's love called mercy comes in. So don't confuse it that because you learn more from that situation, it means it was God that orchestrated it. God simply took advantage of it and allowed his mercy to prevail so that in your rising, you will now rise better, stronger, and more anointed. This is what makes God love. Are you getting it now? But that does not mean God intended for you to necessarily fall. The falling is simply the limitation of your spirit man. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. Sorry. Uh, this is there are many people, if yeah. you ask two, two questions, please, if you come out after two questions, you go and sit down and hope that somebody will ask your question. Are we together? Yeah, um, this has been happening. I will see some things. I, won't, I will not know how to inquire for the meaning. And when it happens later, sometimes they are not good. At times, it posi it's positive. You will what? Sorry. See, for instance. You will see yeah, things, yeah, visions yeah. now. Yes. Now, like, there was a time I saw myself traveling with a lady. And when it came, I didn't understand what it meant. When it came. You were traveling to, with a lady uh, to a, a vision. To, to a place, yes. When it to came where? to a place, I didn't know we were going okay, to a place. Okay, no so location. The, okay. the reality was that the person was under attack and I was the one to lead her to the prayer place um, uh, in Niger State. And that, that oh, was you where held she, her and you were taking her yeah, to a place. Okay. That's where she got her. This thing. But I didn't understand the meaning then. Now, recently, I saw a, a lady, my cosmate, um, pick a bag and was traveling. I didn't know what it meant. The next day, uh, she actually told me she was, tra she was traveling to a place. I said, what for? She said, somebody just died there. Now, I understood that uh, maybe we were, if we had prayed, about the journey and all of that, if it was a bad one. So, how does one, my question is, how would one be, um, how would one know the meaning of the pictures you are seeing at the time of the vision to help your direction in prayers? Okay, God bless you. Now, there are two things here that I will attempt to respond to. I, I don't know if we understand his question, but um, after this, we'll take three people from outside before we continue. So, protocol help us. We'll get the three people from outside who have questions. Please, you see how time is going. If you come and you ask a question that doesn't make sense, we have agreed as a congregation that we are sending you back. Please, we intend to grow and we want to redeem the time. Are we together? So please, before you come, make sure you are prepared not to disgrace yourself. Are we together? Ask questions. Seek counsel with your neighbor whether your question is constructive enough. Yes, yes, please. Please, so that you don't, you don't come out here and, and waste our time. But the gentleman was saying something that I consider to be important. Now, I think the biggest error in the prophetic is lack of spiritual growth to contend for accurate interpretation. The problem with the prophetic or visionary encounters usually, three of us can see the same thing in the spirit, but it does not mean the same for all three of us. Are we together? Now, that's the problem I have with books that say, if you see a chain, it means oppression. What if it's a chain watch? that I saw what if it's a, a necklace to mean an ornament of royalty you can't just say I saw a chain it means I'm under attack I, I remember a lady years ago who was pressing into God and when she got to that dimension she, she a, another lady had a dream about her and saw her naked 
and came and met her and started lambasting her and say you are walking in immorality what kind of nonsense life is this you are giving us an impression like you are serious with god now your secret has been revealed and the lady was depressed and she came and met me that that nakedness was a message in the spirit that she was becoming intimate with the spirit but it was wrongly interpreted three of us can see a finger in the spirit for one it means warning stop what you are doing for another man, one it means direction come up here are we together for another it means i am blessing the works of your hands we all saw the same thing so it is wrong remember in the interpretation of the dream of 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 joseph and the wine presser and baker all of them saw three three things three basket three this he interpreted for the first one and he was happy then the other one said me too i have my own he said in three days they will hang you and this is established and they hung him after three days are we together so stop going around with predefined prophetic interpretations you only make certain prophetic interpretations predefined if the character of their operation has been established in the world for instance anywhere you see a dove is a representation of the manifestation of the holy spirit anywhere it's a spiritual symbol that the spirit of god has associated himself with except if you see a dove and you see it oscillating that's a that's deception for instance because according to the scriptures the enemy can parade himself as an angel of light are we together now so it is true that there are certain default symbols that help us communicate with visionary encounters but not just that you see you can see a woman in the spirit you can see yourself moving with a woman and you may think that god is punishing you from lo or lost a woman in the spirit is a gate that woman you are seeing could be that you are entering a new season are you seeing now but because you do not sustain that spiritual intelligence you go around casting something you should be prophesying to come and, and all of that so i think um for the gentleman i think i've been able to help him i i hope that i got his question correctly if i didn't i'm, I'm so sorry praise god yes my praise dear. god Permit me to say this that first. That is an honor to finally meeting you after listening to your message for a very long time. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm very Thank happy you. I'm here tonight. You're My welcome. question is to Baruch Itku. The first question is, what do you do as a person when you're struggling with spiritual good? Today you are hope, tomorrow you are Spiritual you're growth. Uh, does Watch. it mean that um, it's like a graph that you'll be going zigzag, zigzag till you get to that final slope? Uh, or okay. is it that you question just stop? Two. The second question is, you're talking about dream and vision. In my lodge, we had a case where someone said he had a dream, blah, 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 blah. And it's really caused a big advoc in my lodge. Look at the congregation. Okay. It's, it's really caused a big advoc in my lodge. I'm asking the question that... He had a dream about the lodge or something? About the sister, that the sister came to seduce him, blah, blah, blah. And everybody was now calling the sister a witch. That as, does it mean that all dreams comes from God? Okay. When we see dreams, does it mean that everything is, we see, it is coming from God? Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you, my dear. Um, her first question was, sometimes they should not go immediately so that they can remind me in case I've lost, um, I'm interpreting them with my spirit, so my mind is hardly here. Um, her first question was what? <laughs> up, up and down. Okay. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, please. What does... The Bible say the path of the just is like a shining light that does what shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day now there is a difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding I think I've, I've cleared I've cleared that all right for as long as you are wearing this body the limitations of carrying up mortality right the concept of immortality is a concept that is accessible. But immortality is not an impartation. Immortality is the resultant effect of accessing light from the spirit. Because the Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed. Now, the problem usually is that our lifetime and our level of regeneration is so slow that our lifetime will not be able to help us change that fast. That's why we die. Are we together now? But it is possible that a man can contend for that dimension. Enoch did it. Elijah did it. 
So we know that it's possible to live bodily, although in a glorified form, out of this earth. Moses didn't do it um, and all of that, but at least we have two witnesses, two evidences in the Bible that they were able to access that. So when you find yourself, see, and, and this is, her question is very instrumental to your spiritual health. If you are sick and you don't know, how many of you have seen people in the village who are sick, they don't even know? To them, they are healthy. You just test them and say, Mr. Man, you have malaria plus plus. And yet, the person is playing football. You not, now tell the person, go to the hospital. That's how many people are spiritually. And for me, your spiritual life is tested based on your passion for God. There are certain things that start happening in your life that you know there is danger. Number one, your prayer life. Your, when your prayer life is, is nose diving, don't ever pretend that it's a dimension of growth. You are backsliding immediately once your prayer life is going down don't let satan fool you and say you are just in a season where uh, god doesn't want you to say anything or this and that and that be very careful because it could be deception to destroy you your spiritual life number two your passion for the word number three your passion for the house of god number four i want to call it your your sense of morality is important if all of a sudden i sit down and I find out that I start lusting after you. Call me apostle, call me whatever. I'm lusting after you. I came for Koinonia, I saw you. Abel is preaching, Cain is there, disturbing his mind. What do you think I'll do? It will be stupid for me to wear suit again and come back. I'll use the week to flog out that element of the flesh that is growing. Many of us ignore those promptings until it grows to a point where it backfires, obviously. That's when we start crashing in. The moment, see, the Bible says, let sin have no place. Don't give the devil a foothold. The moment you find out that there is a place, there, is, there are certain things you are bending on your values. You don't pray for three days or four days. You feel all right. Very, very all right. You carry your Bible and there is no zeal to read. Sometimes it could be in the presence of God, you'll be able to find out whether it's spiritual fatigue or it is backsliding. Are we together? But ultimately, the difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding is that under spiritual fatigue, your passion is still there. It's just the zeal and the strength to press to that is not there. But under backsliding, your zeal and your passion dies. Are, are we together now? For the, our brother that saw a vision that a lady is seducing him, um, that's, that's wrong. You see, this, this is the problem we have. When we live in christian communities because people wake up with all kinds of things i spoke to you about interpretation this brother may be a sincere person maybe he's here we are not creating fight are, you, are we together you don't know whether he followed you or koinonia you said he's in your lodge now the point is this it is wrong you see prophecy and in the realm of and the realm of the spirit also depends on your mental renewal for correct interpretation are we together? I can guarantee you that this brother's spiritual paradigm fundamentally is faulty. For him to see an innocent lady and call her a witch to say, is he the only person in the lodge? You'll be surprised it's not even maybe the most handsome or something. So, um, it's, it's a wrong paradigm. Now, you point, do you know another thing? It is possible that I can go to bed and see Shalhoma chasing me maybe with a stick in a dream are we together now and all of a sudden i wake up and i say i saw shahoma chasing me and his welfare that cooks for me i put two and two together and i say my life is under i'm in danger i mean and then i now dissolve koinonia welfare because they are trying to destroy apostle joshua selman some of you you have that paradigm now it can happen a possibility exists that such kinds of things happen i mean in the house of god there are all kinds of things but then i'm saying that your interpretation primarily should not be that because he saw a lady if he does not understand seek counsel there are there are spiritual puzzles that we put together you must let scripture interpret your encounters are we together now i mean in the bible women seduce men what was the progression of the seduction samson was seduced 
Are we together? Who again was seduced in the Bible? Huh? Job was not seduced. Who? Joseph was seduced. Some of you are saying Job. Look at how your poor Bible. Please, how about this is Koinonia. Don't. We are Bible people. How, Job was never seduced. The only woman with him was his wife. Please don't go and say that anywhere. It's very bad. Are, are we together now, my dear? So that, that, that teaching, even if it was true, this is what I would have done. If I had a dream and you pursue me, or you are trying to sleep with me or something in a dream, right? Even if it was your face, it's wrong to get up and call you a witch. Do you know? Because you don't know what spiritual challenges she's facing. You now get up and you now call her a witch. Three situations would help to interpret that. Number one, it could be that there is a spiritual operation around your life and your family that births seduction. It can be true. Are we together? That you as a person, you are not bad, but it's possible that you are being influenced by the spirit of lust or because of the background you are coming from. And so it will happen in the similitude of your face disturbing that person are we together now and so you will feel bad number two it can be the spirit of confusion the devil masquerading to now cause confusion are we together so he will now use your face just like you saw your father quarreling you you saw your mother beating you you just got up and said your mother is a witch anybody whether my father my mother I'm the the woman is innocent. You find out that we keep calling people witches and wizards who have no business with witchcraft. However, 80% of them are being influenced by spirits that operate in the character of what they were accused of. You see that? So, um, whoever he called a witch, I can guarantee you is not a witch. Please, she left her father's house to also come and do NYC. She's not a witch. She may not be spiritually strong and all of that, but she's not a witch. It may be wrong. So go and comfort her. The brother, what he saw, when you have encounters, you are not guaranteed to have interpretation for them. But one thing you can do is blast in tongues sufficiently until your spirit man gives you a note of peace. At that point, you know that whatever is the issue, whether calling it forth or driving it away, it has been settled. It is for that cause the spirit of God makes intercession for us. I cannot tell you that every encounter I've had, I've had interpretation for it. In fact, some of them may be years in the future. As I grow spiritually or I have other encounters that piece them up together, I now see the message. But in the interim, every time you wake up from an encounter, praying in the spirit is the way forward. And you pray until there is that check in your spirit that whatever it is, it's been settled. You understand? So that's what you should do. God bless you and increase you. Eh? Okay, straight to the point. Um, we have, okay, let's have one or two more people. Two more people. Please, if you are sure your question is really going to bless us, we have a little time and do, please and please don't ask anything here that will waste our time. Are we together? The gentleman, uh, if your questions will be fast, I can listen to it and combine it. That gentleman, there's a lady in the background. You, sister, the one waving your hands, come. Um, have we had anybody outside? Okay, there's one person outside. Okay, one usher, come. You're a worker, we love you, come. Okay, so quickly. Good evening, sir. How are you? a process whereby... Don't look at me. As you're saying it, look at the congregation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. In the process whereby someone is suffering from the lust of the flesh... Lost of the flesh. Yes. Example, what is loss of the flesh? For Immorality. example, masturbation. Okay. Or lesbianism. And you are praying. Praying in tongues. Pray. You are in the presence of prayers. And you are still having the feelings. In the presence of praying, you, know, you are still struggling and struggling. You are trying to pray. The spirit is just trying and trying. So, sir, what do you What's do? the way forward? God bless you. Thank you. He's been very sincere. Look, let me tell you the truth. The goal of this question and answer session is to help us grow spiritually. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Praise God. There are people like that. In fact, I've seen people who are suffering from immorality or lust and they're on three days dry. On the third day, before they break with food, are we together now? The devil does some kind of things, positions, the same lady they used to sleep with and it happens again or internet pornography or whatever. We've seen these kinds of cases. So, um, 
Do you know what deliverance is? Deliverance is not just coughing out things and rolling around and pushing chairs and bringing people here. Deliverance is the spiritual mechanism with which a man is separated from a spirit or an influence over his life. Are we together now? There are three dimensions or three levels that access Satan in a man's life. Number one is called covenants. Covenants. It is usually the strongest of the three. Number two is disobedience or ignorance. Number two is ignorance. Then number three is disobedience. Now, the danger of covenant and ties is that your personal salvation does not take away the covenant that is in a territory. Are we together now? That is the reason why someone can be born again. There are still corrupt people in Nigeria, but are you corrupt? No. Are we together now? Nigeria is termed a corrupt nation, yet there are righteous people who are true. Are we together now? The earth is the Lord, yet they are still bombing children and disturbing people. So, there are covenants. A covenant is a legal agreement between spirit entities and human beings or fellow human beings. Right? That either opens up access for good or of evil. Covenants have consequences. Right? They can, they can, they can transcend generations. So, this is very important. That's why you find out that the classic sign of covenants is that there must be a pattern to it. The moment there is a covenant involved in any process, there is a pattern. If these three guys are brothers and you find out that Michael is very rich, Kenny is very rich, Promise is very rich, you see that pattern. There is a covenant that grants that access. Promise, very poor. Kenny, very poor. Michael, struggling. There is also a pattern. So, patterns are usually communications that the access point for the realm of the spirit in that situation is a covenant. So, you find out that a father is an armed robber. When he stole, his son did not know. Many years later, the son will also come and steal. Have you seen people like that? The same pattern that happened to their parents repeats themselves. Because the patterns are a spiritual formula. There is an enchantment like a spell that makes it happen. I know a lady who, who uh, I think um, um, she got pregnant and the person who got her pregnant, I think was a man of God. Same thing happened to her mother. Same thing happened to her grandmother. One reverend in their village got the grandmother pregnant. Many years later, one, one evangelist or something got the mother pregnant. And then now one brother in a fellowship gets the lady pregnant. Now, that brother does not know the reverend that got uh, uh, um, grandma pregnant that time when she was young. But then, the truth remains that there is a pattern. Are, are we together? Are you getting it now? And I know that sometimes many of us are preached into believing they don't exist. And we try to explain them away. But the truth is, it's there. It can be dealt with. Potentially, the birth of Jesus gives us access to victory in this thing. But there is the experience of establishing that victory. Are we together? Number two is ignorance. Ignorance. Ignorance grants access to demon spirits. They manipulate on the ignorance of men and open them up to certain tragic manifestations. Then number three is disobedience. You know it, but your capacity to walk thereof in that obedience is not there. So these are the three access points. So if you find out that you are praying, praying and fasting about the issue of lust or immorality or any entanglement, and it's repeating itself. You need help. That's the reason why God puts um, gifts to the body. To be able to help. Right? Remember our teaching for this course. Many are weak. Many are sick. And many do sleep. God has elected certain people in the body of Christ. And created platforms that can be able to help people deal with these things. That's why we organize miracle services. That's why we organize um, um, all kinds of meetings. That's why when we come to God's presence like this, we take our time to soak in the glory so that the presence and the power of God can come and then address some of these things. So for that brother, you may need help. Seek help. Look for an anointed man of God, not just a counselor, somebody with an anointing that has been demonstrated to produce results and it can help you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. My name is Luke. My name is Luke. 
It's talking about the presence of God. Okay. I heard of your message you preach about doers of the world. Okay. And you mentioned, I forgot the man name, but you say pursue of, of the presence. When we pursue, how do one pursue the presence of God? And how do we abide in that presence of God? Like in Psalm 91 verse 1, when it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Sometimes I may get interpretation of that verse, but sometimes the interpretation does not suit me. So I'm asking, that how do one, what, do, what are the criteria for one to dwell in the presence of God and remain constant in the presence of God? Okay. There are parameters. Number one, you must consistently create an atmosphere. You see, I preached a message years ago called lo the law of atmosphere. Everything thrives based on the atmosphere created. The presence of God requires an atmosphere. The presence of God is invoked, just like you invoke spirits. There is an atmosphere that allows the presence of God to be made manifest. Are we together now? Worship is one key that opens up the presence of God. Your passion your love towards God. In other words, you're prioritizing him. Making him your one and only and ultimate is one way to get the presence of God. Obedience in scripture. He that keepeth my commands, John um, um, 16, 21, I think I'm right. Or 14, 21. He that keepeth my commands, he it is that loves me. And I will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him. So, the love of God is very, very important. Yes, my dear. Praise God. I'm precious, Moses. Um, I want to ask, uh, um, there's this friend of mine that I was preaching to. And um, she was telling me that there's no heaven, that we are going to stay here. There's no there's, heaven? Yes, and there's no hell. Uh, okay. So, now, we're getting into I've, denominational. And, okay. Um, she was not, I was not telling her there is the no story heaven. of uh, Lazarus and the rich man. I now asked her that, okay, where did Lazarus went to and where was the rich man? Then she asked me to open to Revelation 21 verse 1. And after much argument, she was now asking me that. In Revelation 21, she said, and I saw a new heaven a coming new down ahead. And you know, she was now asking me that, okay, where is that new heaven and the new earth? And I didn't know what to really tell just kept quiet i was confused in that aspect god bless you um i don't know if it's the millennial reign of christ or i understand i don't really you see we labor day and night uh contributing our quota to help believers become matured are we together you make people become matured by giving them understanding now before i answer I don't mean in any way. I know that there are different denominations, different Christian sects with their understandings about heaven and all of that. And um, I'm not giving you a denominational opinion. Are we together now? There are many instances in scripture that lets us know that there is heaven. Are we together now? Very, very important. I, I think that um, it doesn't make sense to begin to make all those arguments. Genesis 1 verse 1. The very first verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created what? And the earth. Now, I think that alone answers. First verse, first chapter in the whole Bible. In the beginning, God created. So, don't say where is it. Created, God created the heavens. And notice he never said the heaven. Heavens. Different planes. Paul himself gave us an example he said he was caught up to the third heaven that means there are other dimensions the psalmist said the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord so we know that there are different planes but there is heaven hallelujah are we together now the bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above not just the sky are we together now acts chapter one when jesus was about to be taken when he lifted to heaven Two angels appeared and told the people, men and brethren, why look ye? You know, this and that and that. He said, this same Jesus. Is it not there? Acts chapter 1. Let's use it to answer. At least let's use the words of Jesus. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus is going to heaven now. And he's speaking to us. All the angels are responding. Acts chapter 1. I, I don't want to quote it wrongly. Verse, verse 10. Verse 10, 
I know that when you read from verse 9, let's start from verse 9. It gives us an impression like he just vanished. He did not just vanish. A cloud received him. A cloud received him. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10, please, quickly. And while they looked steadfastly towards where? Heaven. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Verse, verse 11. Which he also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into where? Into where? So we know that heaven is the habitation. The heaven of heavens is where Jesus himself lives. There is a place, a spiritual location called heaven. It says, shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into where? Heaven. Are we together? So that issue of saying um, there is no heaven is not true. Please, the Bible does not negate that. The fact that there is heaven. The Bible clearly tells us in many instances, Old and New Testament, that there is heaven. Jesus himself, I want to give you the ultimate proof now. Jesus himself made us to know that there is heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, when he was teaching us how to pray, he said, our father who art where? He didn't say our father who art around. Our father who art in an exact location, heaven. From that point, we hallow your name. Your kingdom come. So please, let's rest this issue once and for all. There is a real place called heaven and, and um, there are people there right now. Are we together? And we hope that one day we'll join them. Now, what we need to explain is the fact that the Bible says the old heaven and the old earth will be rolled away like a curtain and then a new heaven and a new earth will come. It is true that that very habitation of God will eventually be transported back to this realm. But it won't be in the similitude of these three dimensions. So it's not like we're going to have another three-dimensional realm. No. There will be another atmosphere that comes to occupy this space. This is the sovereignty of God. This is part of the mysteries of the kingdom. Where this whole heaven and all earth will be rolled away to, frankly speaking, we don't know. The Bible does not reveal that. Uh, this is part of the information that is contained in the age to come. Are we together now? That's why there are ages to come that carry certain informations that are important for the saints. So there is heaven, my dear. And every time you preach to people and they argue with you, don't turn your evangelism into debate. Politely decline. You may look foolish. Don't say, no, I can't let this go like this. Let it go like that so that God will be glorified. Yes, my dear. Praise the Lord. My name is Christiana Kadri. Thank you. My question is, sir, like somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a man of God, and you have been waiting. <laughs> okay. Many ladies are happy. Okay, let, let's get the question, please. And Someone prophesied to you. And nobody... And said you'll marry a pastor, yes. and you have been waiting. And the person has been waiting because... One miracle service, I saw you, sir, you prophesied to one lady that she's going to marry a pastor. And one day again, I'm listening to one man of God. He was saying, anybody that prophesied, if he's a man of God, that the thing did not happen, continue waiting. Even when you die waiting, continue waiting. So, <laughs> I'm asking that. So, when somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a pastor, and the pastor is not coming, you continue waiting. What okay. to do? That's a very good question, I think. We can use it. It's not just prophesying about marriage. It could be about anything. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I, I understand what she's saying. And she's communicating probably the pain of a lot of people. Because over time, we men of God have spoken to people. And there are times that for others, the prophecy have even come with precise detail. You are going to marry a man called uh, Ebenezer. He's in media department. The day you will see him is wearing a white cloth, dark trouser, he's holding a camera. If he snaps you, just know. <laughs> now, come Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer. Come now, Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer, you now come for Koinonia. And Ebenezer is just snapping around and focuses on you. 
and your heart is beating it's true ebenezer snaps you and goes to marry somebody else are we together now and now you are waiting and you are frustrated now there are three things here i want to explain i know we have all laughed but let's listen closely now the bible says that even the ministration of the gifts must be done according to the measure of grace are we together two of us can be prophets but the grace the access to authority and strength the spiritual ranking that authorizes us in the dispensing is like you have two doctors one is just doing his housemanship another one is doing another one is a consultant they are all called doctors but are they the same they are not the same at all are we together now this is how it is spiritually so when we when there is the ministration of the word notice sometimes when you see me wanting to talk to people i call people out by the spirit and i just keep quiet because of what the lord is communicating to me sometimes it's like a feedback mechanism i'm checking in my spirit to make sure that this is not an interplay of the flesh and to also make sure if god wants me to reveal it to them sometimes you see me and i talk to people i take away the mic because the information is very sensitive and me is something that can be embarrassing are we together now but let me tell you sincerely let me tell you this sincerely one thing i know about marriage and we have discussed that make reference to my message um challenging discussions on late marriage i think we touched that area where the issue of god said overrides the word of god the bible tells us hebrews chapter one god who in sundry times and diverse manners speak to us through the prophets has in this last day spoken to us through his son which he has appointed to be heir over all things and we know that that son is the living logos the word of god and so whether it is joshua selman i'm not telling you to doubt the word by the grace of god we press into the word of god to make sure that we bring accurate words and there is a track record you can follow up the things that have been prophesied over people some of them have come to pass some of them are already on the way praise the lord now um no matter what it is if a man of god gives you a prophetic word and after a season you do not for instance let's use marriage i prophesy to this lady now and i tell her a pastor is coming and michael comes to her and let's assume michael is just a businessman you know that the natural tendency is for her to drive him away and say please you are not a pastor um he may be a pastor when he marries her god didn't lie are we together but sometimes it can also be that there is need for a check in fact sincerely speaking let me tell you it is very it is very praiseworthy to go back to god again we have seen instances in the bible where god spoke and under certain circumstances he had to speak new things again are we together an example is isaiah 38 when he spoke to isaiah to speak to hezekiah remember that scripture he came and told him hezekiah put your house in order you will not recover from this sickness you are going to die are we bible students so when i hezekiah turned his face to the wall and invoked the mercy of god god sent isaiah again are we together to go back so there is a possibility it's not a doctrine but through scripture we see that there is a possibility um the alignment of man can make god say new things i'll give you an instance if this lady is your wife are we to um, example example if this lady is your wife i'm not showing you your wife if this lady is your wife of, of course let me just put a, a little word of blessing we are proud of our ladies and if i say it and god is is is, is directing you there there's nothing wrong ladies you should give me a happy meal tomorrow <laughs> are we together but now this is the example if this is your wife truly truly and she says i'm not doing do you think god is going to yoke you and tell you you will not marry any anybody again because of her carelessness and disobedience are we together now god will not put you to ransom the same way 
If God calls you into ministry and you say no, will he force you? Will he kill you? The same way he, he tells you that you should surrender all to him. When you refuse, he will not force you. There's hellfire already to settle that issue. So he will not force you. Please, I want us to understand that the plans of God can change. It's his purposes that are eternal. This is a revelation that will deliver many of us right now. The plans of God can change. God planned that you fly Ari to Lagos. And something happens. God will tell you to enter if it's in a cheap transport. The plans have changed. But the destination is still Lagos. But when you sit down and say it must be Arik or it must be flight. Are we together now? In scripture again and again. For instance, do you know it was never God's desire for men to have earthly kings rule over them? When you read in the Bible, it was his desire that he remains their king. But the people out of anger and rebellion, they say give us a king. And God had to make prophet Samuel to go and anoint Saul, the son of Kish, to become a king. Are we together now? Yes. It was never even God's desire. Listen. It was never God's desire for David, for the tribe of David, to be the lineage with which Jesus will come. It was supposed to be Saul. Are we together? But Saul made a costly mistake that costed him that opportunity. Remember when he went and he was off. Um, giving the offering by himself they asked him to wait for the coming of the prophet but he could not wait because the people were murmuring and being a king he was not a priest are we together because in ancient times there were kings priests and prophets they operated in different dimensions occasionally the priests were also the prophets like we have in the case of samuel he was both a priest and a prophet are we together now and so in that incident um, Saul now start he made sacrifices and while he finished Samuel just came and Samuel told him you have done foolishly he said if you had waited for me to come and offer the sacrifice God would have established your throne forever so it would not be the lion of the tribe of or, or the, the root of David it would now be the root of Saul Again, we see that the first person God called in the Bible was not Abraham. The first person God called in the Bible was his father, Terah. Terah was tired and he said, I'm not doing. And then God looked for Abraham. Are we together now? So that's very, very important. I think that um, we need to understand this. My, my dear, if, even if it's me that prophesied to you and you are tired, come and meet me. Come for counseling. And say, let's, let's hear God. Let's pray about this issue again. Especially where there is a God-fearing, very serious and responsible brother who is ready to marry. And is coming around you. You are hanging the person while waiting for the pastor to see if the pastor will come or not. Don't dilly dial. Find the man of God. If the person who prophesied to you is still within reach, find him. If you discern pride and arrogance in him that he's embarrassed to recheck whether his hearing was correct, go and look for another man of God to speak to you. Are we together now? I know there's a lady who came one time, I think from Port Harcourt, coming to confirm because a man of God described somebody, a fair person, and she had been waiting. And there was somebody who really loved God. When she came, I prayed for her and I said, I, I wish you a happy married life. And they are married now, happily married to the glory of God. She would have been waiting forever for, for a, a yellow person to appear. So, praise the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, all these questions we have attempted reveal three things. Number one, it is costly to be ignorant over spiritual things. Are we together? It is costly. Just a little question and answer session, but it has exposed us to a lot of things. It is costly. I trust that with this little question and answer session, it has activated our appetite for more of God. You see, if you do not understand scripture, you will be deceived in many ways. You notice that every question I attempt to answer, I show you a scripture to support it. Because you cannot afford to answer questions with opinions. And you will not know God's opinion if you don't study. Study. Study to show yourself, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. 
rightly dividing the word praise the lord psalms 82 from verse 5 says they know not neither will they understand he said they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course so it is important for us to be good students of the word not religiously studying it but studying it with everything that we have hallelujah number two corporate fellowship is very important is part of the principles and the requirement for your spiritual growth you can see that a platform like this has afforded us an opportunity to know more and to learn a few things to strengthen our spiritual life psalm 133 how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it is like the oil that comes from the head of aaron right down to his bird and to his cat and all of that is yet dear god had commanded the blessing so it's very important corporate fellowship is important for our spiritual strengthening hallelujah and then number three ultimately it reveals to us the necessity of the person of the holy spirit worship team sang the song beautifully we're going to sing that song again and and then we'll sing that song that came i can't even remember what we sang but try to remember it worship team we'll sing those two songs again very beautifully the holy spirit this place is called koinonia is our intimacy with him and our partnership with him that affords us the opportunity to access light and access his wisdom the bible says ride prosperously because of truth right you will only prevail by the truth you know not the truth that is available the truth you know it can be available but if you do not know it you will still die there are still people going to hell whereas the price for our sin has been paid for hallelujah we are going to pray um, just a few minutes and we'll be done we are going to pray and ask the Lord very passionately very passionately to open up our spirits to open up our spirits very very important while seated just pray we're going to stand up but then i want us to pray while seated and talk to the lord some of us have seen this situation has revealed to some of us how clueless we are over spiritual things if you were to be asked some of these questions many of us see that this is like a a test those outside make sure you are praying at the back there outside at the window make sure you are participating in the prayer the Lord is with you right where you are. Make sure you are praying and say, Lord, please, deliver me from spiritual ignorance. Deliver me from ignorance. Grant me access to the word. Grant me access to the word. Deliver me from spiritual ignorance. Lord, I want to be furnished, grounded in the truth. The Bible says that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and, and evangelists and pastors and teachers. It says for the equipping of the saints. The equipping of the saints. That they the saints now equipped will do the work of the ministry. To the end that we all will come into the fullness of the, the, the measure of the stature of Christ not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine lift your voice and pray and say lord in this time and age in these end times where there is a lot of error there is a lot of confusion i pray that i be delivered from spiritual ignorance lift your voice and pray deliver me oh god from ignorance open my eyes to access light in the spirit Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. Pray. Make sure you are praying. Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. It's dangerous in these days not to lack the knowledge that you need.
Number two, Lord, align my spirit in a way that I'll begin to touch realities in the realm of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Let there be a programming in my spirit. Let there be an alignment in my spirit, man. Have your way. I'm tired of wrong interpretation. I'm tired of interpreting spiritual realities in a wrong way. I'm tired of reading my Bible and not accessing the light and the power that I need. Pray. Align my spirit. I cry for an alignment upon my spirit, man. Have your way. Have your way. please rise as we pray this very prayer point is important oh god if ever you need a vessel find one in me lift your voice and pray use me oh god many of us have stopped praying that prayer use me for your glory lift your voice and pray lord use me use me use me i may not be a man of god but make me a mighty vessel in your hand Oh yes, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. Use me for your glory. As an agent of deliverance. As an agent of transformation. As an agent of healings. Miracles, signs, wonders. Use me in the prophetic, oh God. Use me in the apostolic, oh God. Use me in the healing ministry. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Hey. Holy God, take your place, take your place, take your place. Holy For your glory use me for your glory use me for your glory have your way have your way hallelujah hallelujah i like us to pray any gift of the spirit any dimension that once walked in you but for some reason has stopped working. i like you to pray and say, Lord, revive her. Let there be a restoration. Lift your voice and pray. I used to have dreams, but the dreams have disappeared. Lord, let it come back. I used to have encounters. I used to have ministration of angels. Oh God, my prophetic dimension was sharper than this something has happened lift your voice and pray restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration of the gifts of the spirit 
restoration of the wisdom of the spirit restoration of passion passion for God restoration of passion restoration of hunger spiritual seriousness hunger for Bible studies hunger for prayer hunger for fasting hunger for the house of God hunger to see his kingdom come Take your place. Take your place. Pray from your heart. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Hallelujah. Listen. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Don't allow the things of the flesh pollute your spiritual atmosphere. It will destroy you, I tell you. Some of us is friends. I'm not teaching you to hate people. The character of the Christ is love. But you cannot give everybody access to pollute your environment with everything. No. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, please don't say it does not matter. The true spirit of holiness, let me tell you the truth. The true spirit of holiness is the atmosphere that brings the presence of God. The true spirit of holiness. Don't trivialize it. The true spirit of holiness is what creates the atmosphere of the spirit. Because he's called Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. There is a beauty that holiness brings. It's called the beauty of holiness. Culture your atmosphere. Take God seriously. No one leg in, one leg out and you are just playing around. Don't be careless with your life hallelujah I just sense a need that we should make this prayer again a final point because like Samson there are people who have lost touch with certain virtues you receive certain things maybe in a meeting or in koinonia or somewhere or an impartation a man of God laid hands on you and activated spiritual possibilities but some of us you did not know how to fan it to flame there are some of us here the level of the prophetic you should be walking in now, if you were consistent with God, you would have been walking in notable levels, but you are still at that level. There are some of us, the level of the teaching grace, if you were only serious with the word, you read your Bible once in a month, but look what you are doing. Imagine if you read it every day. Hallelujah. He said, cast me not away from your presence. Take not your spirit from me. We need that restoration. And we're going to pray. Make this prayer personal. Listen. You know where you are slacking in the spirit. Don't feel condemned. But you must sustain grace to catch up. Some of us is our prayer life. There's really nothing left there. Some of us is our word life. You are a prayer machine. But your word content is low. So there is wrong interpretation to your spiritual things. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, a restoration. Mention the area you want him to restore you. Lord, I need a restoration of your presence. I used to carry heavy weights of your presence. Everyone who came around me felt that presence. But for some reason, oh God, I've lost it. Pray. Restoration.
lift your hands as I pray for you. Fire is going to come on a lot of people. Just in one minute, there will be activations and impartations. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. There are a number of people in this place that the fire must be restored through apostolic fire, through prophetic fire. At the count of three, listen, I want you to shout that name, Jesus. As you shout that name, for many of you from tonight, you will go back and the dreams will be restored. For many of you, right away, the healing anointing comes. Lift your voice. Father, I pray that in the next one minute, let there be a mighty restoration and an impartation as your people shout that name i pray that your glory will fall on them right now one two three Secretary. receive it right now right now right now right now receive it my goodness help them that impartation that impartation receive it right now right now in the name of jesus Receive it, receive it. Dreams, dreams, dreams. The Lord is activating dreams. Prophetic dreams. Symbolic dreams. Restoration of healing power. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. Hallelujah. The healing anointing is falling. I don't know why God is talking to me about healing. The healing anointing, receive it right now. Lord, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Take it. Take it now. 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 The healing virtue. I release it from the spirit. Power to heal. Power to heal. Power to heal. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Power to heal. Power to heal. In the name of Jesus. Power to heal. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I hear my spirit. The gift of utterance. Utterance. Lord, where are those people? Like fire will come upon you. Some of you on your mouth, literally, utterance, utterance. I impart it right now, right now, right now. Utterance, inside and outside. Fire is falling. Mantles of utterance. of God. God is a God that desires that we move forward, that we make progress that we have notable results in our lives. John 15 and verse 8, he said, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. God desires that we make progress. In fact, everything that is alive grows. Everything that is alive increases. Are we together? Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, the Bible says, And Jesus increased or grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says, The path of the just is as a shining light. It says it shines more and more unto the perfect day. 
So God is a God of advancement. Please understand this. It is his will that we make progress spiritually, financially, maritally, career-wise. All of the dimensions of your life that we make progress. Let me share with you a scripture that has blessed my life. 1 Samuel chapter 12, please, and verse 6. Never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. Please read it. Ready? It's projected. One to read. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. Stop. Stop. That means in this kingdom, men do not just move. When you see people move from one dimension of victory and exploits to another, the Bible says behind the scene, it is the Lord that advances men. So when you see your pastor moving from one level to the other, triumphing, that it is the Lord that advances men. No man sustains the ability in himself to make progress. You can be well intentioned, but in this kingdom, it is the Lord that advances men. So behind every strange result that you see, behind the mysterious exploits and the rising of men in this kingdom that dumbfounds the wisdom of men, it is the Lord that advances people. The Lord is going to advance someone in this place. It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. You just saw Moses moving forward. You just saw Aaron moving forward. But the Bible is saying it was the Lord. That means when we see you moving forward, that by April, you turn back and it looks like 10 years was put in one year. When, 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 when people ask you and say, I, 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 the last time I met you, it was not like this spiritually financially you will refer them to this scripture that behind the exploits of the saints it is the lord that advances men hallelujah this is very powerful god is a god that operates by laws and systems please look up the character of the kingdom is such that you will hardly find god do the same thing twice in scripture the first thing God does or introduces to men is the model of what he wants to do. In everything he does the first time is a seed and a pattern for the continuity of that result. So when he wants to make man, he makes the first man, the first woman and never has to make man and woman again. He created a pattern. Are we together now? So that every time you want more men, you subscribe to the law. I, are we together now? God has not had any cause to create plants and animals again because he made them and weaved in them a pattern and a system. God is a God of systems. And if you do not understand his methodologies, you may never enjoy the rich benefit. Even though you are a partaker of that life, you may be alienated from the life of God. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Ephesians 4 and verse 18. Are we together? So we need to understand the systems of God. And he operates by laws. Spiritual laws. Advancement in the kingdom has laws. There are spiritual principles that when we walk in keeping with those principles, inevitably. Let me say this before I begin to just share. There are three levels of experiencing the power of God. Or the power of God is vested upon men in three levels number one there is the dimension of the power of god that comes through encounters when you encounter god there is a dimension of his power that is invested in encounters if it is the god of the bible you meet you will never be the same after you meet him there is a dimension of his power that comes upon you number two there is a dimension of the power of god that is invested in laws and principles Please understand this. The power that makes laws and principles work is still the power of God. 
so there is a dimension of the power of god that is invested in laws and principles you do not have to acknowledge god to access that power you just have to understand the laws are we together now so you can deny god you can reject god and yet because you understand the principles the power was designed to be released at the instance of understanding the moment you understand the principle that governs that spiritual process the power of god is released it is at this level that principalities and powers and all kinds of um sects religious sects seem to be able to tap into spiritual power is at that frequency that there is a dimension of God's power that was invested in laws and knowing him was not a condition to release that power understanding his principles is what releases the power number three there is a dimension of God's power that is invested through covenant with men this is not for everyone you partake of that dimension of power to the degree to which you align with who and what God is doing part time so if there is something prophetic God is doing with your pastor listen to me there are certain covenants that he can have with God that makes for certain possibilities in this assembly you will be surprised that even before you understand the principle responsible for that result you will already be enjoying it because you are under you are enjoying the dimension of power that comes through God's vow and God's covenant with a man there are people before you started tithing God started prospering you even before you understood what you were doing before you started giving before you started committing yourself it was because God had a covenant with a man that anyone who comes under your spiritual influence will benefit from that which you have with God I said all that so that you will understand that the principles of the kingdom spiritual laws are powerful they are irrefutable when you read Genesis 11 the Bible talks about Nimrod, the son of Cush, his desire to build a city whose tower and the top will reach the heavens. In that, in that story, Satan was not mentioned. In that story, the Holy Spirit was not mentioned. Yet, God testified that he was the only one who could stop what they were doing. Laws are powerful. You will tame life when you understand spiritual laws. Hallelujah. The laws of advancement. Write this down. Growth and advancement in this kingdom must be intentional. There's no assumption as far as growth and advancement is concerned. It must be intentional that I desire to leave this level spiritually. I desire to leave this level financially. You will be amazed at how many people who hope to move forward. They wish to move forward. They believe that just because they are in Christ, one day automatically they will move forward. The only dimension of growth that looks automatic is your biological growth. Every other kind of growth must be initiated intentionally. Hallelujah. It's very, very important. And because you see, the principle of fulfillment is such that it is in your growth and progress that you find fulfillment. When you find fulfillment, you find fulfillment as you move, as you make progress. You will celebrate having a beautiful house now and having the money to pay for that rent. But after a few years, you will start getting angry that you are a tenant. You see that now? Something you once celebrated will no longer bless you again because there is an instinct for advancement. As a man of God, you will operate at a frequency in ministry and you'll be happy for a while and then later a dissatisfaction is in your spirit. God is a God of advancement. I want to share with you a few principles. I've had the privilege to glean from the wisdom of the word and the wisdom of uncommon mentors. What you are learning I submit to you are not the opinions of men it is dangerous and even destructive to teach you opinions the truths that I share with you are irrefutable principles guarded by God's own jealousy 
from whatever point you are if you walk in keeping with these truths i give you a guarantee as touching the name of the lord you will never remain where you are and believe me i say it with all humility i know what i'm saying i'm not teaching you nonsense he said the things we have heard the things we have seen the things that our hands have handled even of the word of life that is what we communicate unto you so can you pray one more time open my eyes oh god let me see open my eyes in the name of jesus the laws of advancement hallelujah when i found out the systemic character of god it changed my life because my spiritual background was such that i came from an evangelical background then when i began to have encounters with god i was amazed that i was knowing him getting deeper in the things of god but in a shocking way the quality of my life did not change regardless my encounters the only benefit i was receiving was spiritual benefit in terms of my knowledge of god but the quality of my life my influence and i said something this something is wrong how could i be having such profound encounters with the god of the bible and yet my life would not change until i was introduced to the systemic character of god that there is jesus the way everybody say it Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. If you know the truth, wonderful. If you know the life, wonderful. But I introduce to you in this conference, Jesus, the way, the methodology of the kingdom. It is still Jesus. Many people do not know Jesus the way. And if you do not know the way, then you don't know how results are obtained in this kingdom. The dimension of Jesus that reveals how results are obtained is called Jesus the way. The way to growth. The way to increase. Are we together? Very quickly, let's conserve time. The first law of advancement that I want to share tonight is called the law of vision. The law of vision. Please pay attention. The law of vision. Jeremiah chapter 1 please. From verse 11 and 12. The law of vision. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see. But this is what I see. The rod of an almond tree. Verse 12. Then saith the Lord unto me, thou hast seen well for i will hasten my god so there is a relationship between speed and vision the moment you see well you compel speed in your life because you have seen correctly i will hasten i was going to perform it anyway but on the strength of the clarity of your vision i will hasten my word to perform it genesis chapter 13 verse 14 and 15 genesis chapter 13 we're discussing vision the lord said unto abraham after that lot was separated from him lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art northwards and southwards and eastwards and westwards 15 it says for all the land which thou seest to thee i will give unto thy seed forever not the land that is available the one you see is the one that is given to you there's vast land available but as far as your vision can capture that is what will be delivered unto you what is vision a clear picture of the next level of your life a clear picture of your destiny this is very powerful there are many well-meaning believers born again filled with the holy spirit and they have ignored the power of vision to the detriment of their progress vision is powerful a clear picture of the next level of your life it is in this area that both science and religion agree that without vision there is no movement 
motion is a function of vision there is no car that does, does not have a provision to look at there is no plane no matter how how managed they must give space because sight is what controls movement the pilot must see the driver must see the captain must see i don't know any creature that has his eyes backward every creature i know has the eyes forward because you only move in the direction of your eyes vision is powerful please listen carefully the vision for my life this ministry continues to make giant strides in the spirit because your pastor has a vision very clear vision are we together now now as powerful as vision is it does not profit you just remaining as vision you must break your vision into goals and break your vision into daily tasks until your vision becomes daily tasks it will only remain a dream in the realm of the spirit there are people who have done well in terms of writing a theme that seems to coordinate their lives but we are unable to break the visions into goals what is a goal a desired end an expected end a subset of that vision and you break it into tasks there is an energy there is a power that vision gives when you break your vision into tasks it gives you focus vision gives you the legitimate ground to say no to many things there are many things you will not be able to have the courage to say no to until you have vision vision gives you the legitimate ground to say no to many things if you are not a man of vision you are not a woman of vision you will not have the courage to say no to so many things and there are many things 24 hours was given to you with respect to your vision so time will never be enough to mix your vision alongside many distractions you will have to cut away so many things to give you the time and to give you focus can i tell you this the unit of destiny is time whatever you give your time to you are giving part of your life to and you must be sure that every minute and every second you commit to anything is worth that while everybody say vision show me a man who has nothing working in his life but vision i show you a man who is already walking his way to a dimension of kingdom influence dimension of grace that no principality and power can stop vision is powerful i do not know any leader who is not visionary even the devil is visionary he has been clear about his assignment even jesus testified about the dexterity of satan's assignment that anytime you see him he is there to steal to kill to destroy there's no record of him coming to advise there's no record of him coming anytime the thief cometh not that means he has no business coming except this singular vision no wonder he seems to be succeeding the law is so powerful where we are right now because we are hoping god will find a way of just lifting us very very spiritual but very wrong some of those superstitious thinkings in the name of jesus the son of the living god be delivered from it now we have many sociological wise sayings they look spiritual because they've been handed down by well-intentioned people but these things are they give access to the devil to blind our minds and our progress one day you go better you've heard that kind of saying i know my god is too faithful to just leave me like that you are right but with respect to this truth you are wrong i introduce to you the god of systems hoping that your life will change just because he's alive let me tell you this there are many children there are many people who are dying if god were to act he would attend to them first before he comes to you even at the 
at the detriment of your eternal salvation he did not interrupt your choice there are people today who woke up this morning but as we speak they are in hell now and yet God is still seated on his throne so hoping that one day something will just happen is a joke you have to prophesy to yourself myself wake up one day i will have a global ministry one day in the name of jesus i will bless me wonderful congratulations except for the fact that it will only remain a wish in the realm of the spirit let me tell you the difference between a wish and a goal a wish is a desire with no responsibility commitment to it when you set a goal it is a strong desire that is backed up with the willingness to commit whatever it takes under God to actualize that goal responsibility is the key word if all you have is just a desire it will never come to pass your desire must be able to sponsor the willingness to pay whatever price under God to see that it comes to pass are we together you call it gaining momentum so where the, the plane is only warming up vision I am amazed pastor at how many Christians respectfully speaking live absolutely visionless lives people just move up and down and blame God for everything when they can't see God they blame pastors who they can see for everything and then blame parents blame every now I, I understand that sometimes these things can be emotionally overwhelming but the day you start moving forward is the day you take responsibility over your destiny and say in the name of Jesus I'm tired of giving excuses in the name of Jesus I'm tired of of legitimizing the continuity of mediocrity and weakness in my life I respect and I sympathize with your background I, I sympathize with the fact that you came from a family that was not very responsible I, I'm, I'm not I'm not I sympathize with you but wake up from where thou art lift up your eyes for as long as you keep looking down you will soon find your children looking with you you will soon find your grandchildren joining them to look with you many of our parents respectfully speaking kept complaining until we now join them in that complaint you make up your mind in this conference that my children will not find me there in the name of Jesus Christ there are few people historically speaking who had the leverage to be able to rise to positions of influence and notoriety most people had to speak to themselves right from where they were you ask your pastor he will tell you that there were times he had to just shut away and say look it's time for us to move forward i remember talking with a man very great and influential man and this man told me apostle would you believe that as at the time i married my wife I had to give her one of my big shirts when she was pregnant. That means you remove your shirt and say, wife, there's no buying, uh, you know, those, those gowns. Said, I don't have the money for that. Don't expect anything there. But uh, thank God I'm bigger than you. We can make do with this. The Lord will prosper us in the future. Now, that man would have given a careless excuse and now mentored the child and said, young man, let me tell you how you are right let me tell you the story and the child in anger and pain will remain there become a teenager become an adult marry his own wife and say don't 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 blame me for being irresponsible i'm continuing something there is a there is a history to this there has to be someone who will break that cycle and it's, it comes with the power of vision what seest thou? As for me, I see a life of glory. In the name of Jesus, I see an opportunity to wake up every morning, transforming a generation, blessing a people. For someone, you are seeing a company that God has been speaking to you. You have refused to write it. You have refused to take it serious. The Holy Ghost works like a woman. If he tries to give you his attention and you ignore it, he will step back until he discerns seriousness from you again. Many of you, the reason why God stops showing you certain things is because he traced that you don't take his speaking serious. 
out of your father's house. The first assignment is come out. Come out of your father's house. He came from a land of wizardry and witchcraft, or of the Chaldeans, and he called that traditionally. He said, Come out of your father's house from your kindred, from everything to a land that I will show you. The transformation started when he changed what he was seeing. May grace to be visionary rest upon your life. Hear me. You may be in that one room now. There's no point faking what can be real. Just be patient with your destiny. You see, the powerful thing about vision is that it has the power of omnipresence. You can be in a room and your vision can be where you will be tomorrow. The, the imagination is powerful. It can go. You can't. Listen. Listen. Your vision works with your imagination and it can, it can go to your future. Make sure it supervises that that future is real. It will come back and take your body there. Are we together? Vision. Let's hurry up. Number two. The second spiritual law that governs advancement in this kingdom is the law of light. The power of spiritual illumination and insight. Please pay attention. In this kingdom we rise by the light that we possess. The law of light. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae and he was praying for them. And he desired that they might be filled with three dimensions of light. Number one, the knowledge of God's will. Number two, all wisdom. Number three, spiritual understanding. It takes light to rise in this kingdom. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 2. Paul said, I went up by revelation. Galatians 2, 2. I went up. It took more than desire. From where I was, I went up, and it was revelation that took me up. I went up by revelation. Light is powerful in this kingdom. Psalms 45 and verse 4. And in your majesty, he says, rise, rise prosperously because of truth. And in your majesty, rise prosperously. Triumph. Move forward because of the truth that you know. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Very, very humbling scripture. The Bible says, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. The labor of the foolish, where yet every one of them, there's no exception to it. The labor of the foolish, where yet every one of them, because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Not because there is no city. The city is there. But the method to get there. Have you climbed a bike with someone who looked so confident? And he said, take me somewhere. And the guy was speeding as if he was going to kill you. And then he said, where did you say you are going again? I, I know it's where. And he said, I thought you said you know the place. He said, well, um, mention the name again. I think I'm... I'm. And he said, so wh where were you going with this kind of speed? Listen, every dimension of result in the kingdom has a light and illumination component that connects to it. If it's finances, there is a dimension of spiritual truth that connects to it. If it is speed, if it is restoration, if it is influence, all of these facets of results have a, a, an exact body of spiritual knowledge allocated to them. Are we together now? Can I tell you this? Our knowledge of God is, our pursuit and the knowledge of God is infinite. Even in heaven we'll continue to be learning God. But the keys that make for a successful life are finite. You can hold them. They are not infinite. You can actually hold the keys that make for a successful life. They are many, but they are finite. Are we together? Like a student... Learning never stops, but 
when you went to school there was an exact curriculum allocated for the degree you went to get isn't it when you exhausted it they gave it to you so you can beat your chest and say i am a doctor or i am a this and that it doesn't mean your learning has stopped but you have exhausted that curriculum there is an exact body of knowledge that is responsible for specific spiritual outcomes you want to rise financially there is an exact body of knowledge allocated you want favor upon your life there is an exact body of knowledge isn't it amazing that many times we desire outcomes without the knowledge that connects us to them for instance if it is favor you want to see in your life why am i not seeing favor i know the bible says i should be favored but why is it not working because you do not understand the dynamics that make for favor light so apostle what are the laws that govern favor for instance just as if i desire favor just wishing and hoping that favor will come I, I would frustrate myself i have to learn the principles that control favor in this kingdom exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians are you seeing now favor is a product of light favor works with sight i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty so emptiness has an explanation when your hand is empty it's not it's, it's not a, a a a happenstance there is an exact spiritual law you are violating that leads to emptiness are we together apostle why am i not favored because for many of us you think oh if god just wants to favor me he will favor me and i've respectfully observed in the body of christ that the definition of favor you know many times we say favor is unmerited i understand what you are trying to say but the truth is that it is the dimension of favor that works as unmerited access with respect to salvation that is unmerited favor is very merited I'm just using favor as a case study to explain light. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. This is the law that controls favor. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. Read with me please. One to read. <laughs> So the Bible gives us the similitude of two pregnant women, two pregnant women. The first woman is called good understanding and that she has a child in her womb. When she gives birth, the name of that child is favor. There is also another woman called transgression. She gives birth, the name of her child is hardship. So when you see the child, no child falls from the sky. There is a mother that gives birth to that child. Theoretically speaking, the womb of a woman should be able to give birth indefinitely, isn't it? That means you can program favor again and again. I've told you if it happens only once, it's breakthrough, not favor. The proof that it is favor is consistency regardless the circumstances. So many people have not really experienced favor. So hoping that it will happen, you will just testify once in four years, once in five years. What happened to you is not favor. What happens to you is the law of time and chance because it happens to everybody. You can choose and program favor over your life and it happens every time you will get to a point where if in a day you are not favored you go on a retreat because you know something is wrong are you blessed good understanding is what gives favor but the way of the transgressor is hard favor works with the power of sight let me tell you this if the grace for favor is really on you believe me when i say this the only person who cannot bless you is a blind person favor works with sight that's how it works esther chapter 2 and verse 15 let's hurry up is god helping us esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the b part please and esther obtained favor where in the sight of how many all them that looked upon her so if the favor of god is on you if i can look at you that grace will compel me to attend to you it's true it's true this is scripture 
Not even the king could withstand it. Verse 17. Give us the same scripture. Esther 2 and verse 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women. And she obtained grace and favor where? In his sight. I've told you favor works with sight. When favor is on you, you activate the principles. It's, it's, it's a charm-like compelling force that people just look at you and they are compelled to want to transformation. They find out that they are unable to walk in the fullness of that which God desires. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, please. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, look up please, so is he, not so he will be. You are already it. Your thought life, your mindset, your perspectives. Write this down please. Let's talk a bit about mindsets. If this is where I stop tonight, it is too important to be brushed. Write this down. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. It is a viewpoint. It is a perspective. Your mindset talks about your ideologies, your value systems, your thinking pattern. Let me define what a stronghold is. A stronghold is a mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits so that the victim is kept perpetually in that line of thought. It is that spiritual condition that makes the word of God of none effect. That means what the devil does when he wants to destroy you is to bring informations that are based on lies, informations that are not consistent with the character of God. They may be sociologically right. They may be thoughts that you are familiar with. When he finds out that those thoughts are crystallized in your mind, demon spirits come to build a wall around that mindset to ensure that there is no other way you think. Because your thinking is what keeps the door open for their operation. If you're, The Bible says, this sign shall follow them that believe. That means what follows you is a report card of what you believe. You don't drive what follows you. You change what you believe. And what follows you changes too. You see that now? These signs shall follow them that believe. So what is following me is following me because of what I believe. Failure. Retrogression. You have a relationship in two weeks. All your friends just hate you and leave you. Everybody, you've given excuses that everybody hates you. The signs are following you. You don't say, go, I don't like you. That's not how you drive them. You change their, they are coming in honor. Something in your mind is attracting them. When you become disloyal to those faulty belief systems, the signs also change. Are we together? Mindsets are formed through cultural influences. Now, there are positive aspects of culture, but there are very wrong, demonic, and destructive aspects of culture. Family backgrounds, past experiences, failures and limitations, levels of exposure, associations. All these are factors that frame our mindsets. And when God wants to do business with you in this kingdom, you will have to contend for a transformed mind. There are many people who God cannot use them today because something is wrong with their thinking. Their thinking does not give that allowance. Mindset. How does the process of transformation occur? We're praying. Number one, the first process that leads to transformation is awareness, a recognition. Even if you don't know the answer, the fact that you know you are in a situation that needs help is already the process of transformation. Transformation starts with recognition and awareness. 
even if it's an awareness of your ignorance, it is a miracle in itself. A child does not know he's a child. I hope you know that. It's an adult that knows that what the child is doing is called childishness. A fool does not know he is foolish. It's only a wise person that there has to be a reference. So when God wants to show you mercy, he will find a way of contrasting your mindset with a superior belief. Now you look from that lens and see that, ah, I'm doing something wrong. Otherwise, you will flatter yourself in your mid because in your world you are still king, no matter how depraved that world is. You will know how faulty your kingdom is when another king comes to. In ancient times, there were times when other kings would come. Both the king and his kingdom, they sweep them. That's how mindsets are. You can live in a small world. And because you are king in that small world, you can still believe that it's a kingdom worthy of living in. Until God expands your mind by showing you the possibilities that can be, then you will come back and start deconstructing those mindsets. Mindsets are powerful, very powerful. Genesis 11. Let me show you something as we pray. Please give us Genesis 11. We'll read the first four verses, maybe four or five. The Bible says, And the whole earth were of one language and of one speech. Verse 2. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of China, and they dwelt there. Verse 3. The Bible says, And they said to one another, Goto, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they made bricks for stone and slime they made for mortar. Notice, notice that Nimrod was just proposing something. They had not started the building. He was doing something to their minds. Gentlemen, I'm putting you as a team we are on a project. Whether it was a spiritual building or physical, we know that creation happened. There was a building. And he started by working on their minds. Verse 4. The Bible says, he said to them, let us build a city whose tower and whose top may reach the heavens. And let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad on the face of the earth. Verse 5. Now this is a very fearful scripture. Read it with me. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Stop. That means while they were talking in the realm of the spirit, a building was rising. And God said, who is building? He didn't come and, they had not started. But God said he came to see the building that was finished already. The moment their mind started building it in the realm of the spirit, there was a structure that was rising that called the attention of God. Everything is built twice. Anything that is not built twice cannot be truly built. You build your company twice. You build your destiny twice. And the first building is the authentic one. Because even if the other one is destroyed, that one will force a physical equivalence of it to come. Believe what I'm teaching you. It's true. So you can be right where you are. And the Holy Spirit takes your mind to a place where the great are seated and says this is your space in destiny while that is happening in heaven they are already seeing you move whereas you think you are in one small room do you know the realm of the spirit can discern progress please hear what i'm telling you this is how some of us came to this thing by the grace of god right from where you are your body may be limited by transport fare But your mind has an ability. Your mind has omnipresence. It can enter your future. And find out that that thing God said is true. It will return back. Only your mindset can hold your hand to where you need to be. I remember days when I would have the vision. Seeing myself around the world preaching the gospel standing and talking and ministering to kings and nobles from that background is a joke based on my background but i found out that this mind is a miracle is a miracle that will take ages for men to know what god gave them dream with god right from that room dream with god and there is no power in existence men can bully your body not your mindset one of the most powerful spiritual laws I learned in my life. 
it is the uh, it is this law that keep, puts everybody at the same level in life everybody has the same opportunity you may not believe what i'm telling you but it's true from the lens of a transformed mind the justice system of god ensures that if you use your mind there is no limitation that will be sustained in your life go back home write down the business idea write down the vision for 2021 write a scripture connect to it and dream with the spirit of god let him show you while that is happening your current mindset will say you are mad is right that's why you are living it your current mindset to say no no it has you can wave it goodbye and say i wave this level of life goodbye and it will wave you back forever hallelujah the only limit in my life is the voice of god and process these are the only limits i have in my life the voice of god and process these are the only limits i have chosen that these are the only things that limit me in life the voice of god and process do you believe what i'm sharing with you our time is up can you spare me five more minutes thank you please listen i want you to pay attention i've shared with you the law of vision the law of light specific spiritual illumination your your spiritual sojourn is profitless if you cannot connect the result that that light leads to just reading the bible randomly in hope that you will ease the guilt of not being serious with god will not profit you you have to look for specific light that leads to specific outcomes are we together and then the power of a transformed mind. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind. To change my mind. It's a decision. How do you contend for transformation? Valuable information. You have to introduce to your mind. Information that are now superior in context relative to what you already have there you cannot listen to what you've been listening to before before you became a christian before you came to this church and expect transitions to happen you will have to sustain the discipline that's the, the discipline of allowing the truth that can build your mind to be introduced and you have to pay the price to be consistent i dare you go and get your pastor's tapes make up your mind that i must listen to two or three or four of these teachings every day that's why i said it requires discipline discipline you listen to one in the morning you can play one while you are walking the goal is not just awareness the goal is transportation you are transporting that information right to your subconscious this is true one more law and then we're done tonight the law of productivity these are the laws that govern advancement the law of productivity Proverbs chapter 18, please, and verse 16, the law of productivity. It says the gift of a man, Proverbs 18 and verse 16, the gift of a man maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. So your gift is like an usher. You know how you come into a place and they say, let me see your invitation. Oh, you're invited this way. It's your gift that is responsible for giving you space. To have an illusion that there is a space waiting for you is just sociological comfort. There is no space anywhere waiting for you. You create that space. Are we together? Yes. The gift of a man. The gift of a man. 
I was, I was just celebrating and commending your pastor for the profound, his profound understanding in the area of faith, in the area of family life. I mean, he's uncanny, his perspectives. It's true. It's true. I think you should clap. How many lives, how many destinies, how many homes, how many people he has given answers and explanation and perspectives. The gift of a man. Nobody is going to keep clapping for you indefinitely for nothing. People love you, but they love themselves. They love their future. So to have this belief that people will indefinitely keep clapping. No. You must have something of substance that gives you space in destiny. I made up my mind as a covenant with my own life and destiny. That everywhere God has granted me a gift and an ability... I will sharpen it in a way that it will be impossible for a generation to ignore you. Not for self-aggrandizement, but that you are, you, 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 these are principles that lift you to a position where you can represent the purposes of God. Please challenge the spirit of laziness in your life. Some of you, without developing your gift, people have started commenting on it. Imagine what happens when you develop it. I hope you still like me. Please, listen. Listen to me. Nobody goes to a mango tree without mango and just starts clapping and is happy. You look at the tree, you may stay a few minutes to get shade and move. But once it is time for mango, as it starts coming out, it starts, the, the fruit is calling you. The mango does not want followers. The mango is not looking for followers, but it is too gifted to be ignored. The mango does not go around calling for followers. It just keeps building the mango. And because hunger is something you cannot resist, you may ignore it for a while, but one day, when the sun scorches you and you stand and watch this mango, Don't call men. They only produce fruits. And men have to swallow their pride. Have you seen the skills that people employ to climb trees? All because they are looking for... I once saw a video of... Um, I think they were trying to... This, this palm, palm... I think the one they climb with as though they are climbing a ladder. I said, you mean all this skill to reach that tree? Be gifted. And watch how people will inconvenience themselves with joy to come and place a demand on the grace of God upon your life. When people give excuses of time, excuses of comfort, it's because your gift is not notable enough. I assure you, ask the harvest. A politician, respectfully speaking, will come with his whole dignity and meet a man in a tattered room and not ask whether there is AC and not ask whether the man can speak English. The man says, turn behind and move backward. And he says, yes, sir. Because he knows that my, my political career is at the mercy of that. May you be so gifted in the name of Jesus. May your gift be so refined that it will be impossible for a generation to ignore you. Believe what I share with you. There are people in this country who cannot go out of a job for one month. Believe me. Believe me. In as much as we are saying there is no job, there are companies that if some of their people cough, they will buy a pharmacy, not a drug. Make up your mind that you will be so gifted. If it is a ministry, discern the dimensions of God's grace that he has put. And walk it out. Place your life upon it. Apostle God has called me to be a prophet. Like who? Everything you prophesy is wrong. The world will not place a demand on that kind of grace. Let's let in the name of honesty. Are we together? Apostle God has called me to be a kingdom financier. Let me know what you know about finances. Can you talk to kings? You are talking to your colleagues and you are happy about it. Your colleagues are not billionaires. Thank God for them. 
But your goal is to be able to mentor kings. That a nation will call you to hear the counsel of God upon your life. Make up your mind that you will not be small. Go back and refine your gifts. Apostle, do you know I can cook? Can the governor eat your food? Because you see, you have to serve kings to receive the rewards of kings. Am I challenging you? Let me tell you this. There is nothing that, it, that is of value that is not in sufficient demand in this life to bless you. If you are in every industry, there are people at the top. It's those who are at the top that enjoy the blessings. Make up, shake away mediocrity. When people are clapping for you, look at those clapping for you. If they are not kings, keep moving. Mark 1 37. And when they had found him, this was the story of Jesus. Jesus had finished healing, doing several things. He ran away to go and just rest and pray, and men would not let him rest. There was such a magnetic property. Let me tell you, being gifted carries a strange a strange magnetic property it's amazing the level of inconvenience people will go through with joy when you are gifted I assure you in today's world most likely it's only your family that will love you whether you are valuable or not God and your family members they are enough to support you but not enough to reward you the vast majority of your reward will be in the hands of people who are in desperate need. They need people who are gifted. I made a vow with God that you will never meet me twice to be blessed. Can you rise to that level of grace? Can you rise to that level of value? You are a CEO, your company. What solutions are you providing? Can I meet you once and be addicted to you because of the power of the value that you carry? You know, people give me all kinds of gifts and people paint me and sometimes when I see the photo they give, I say, you mean this is me? You didn't see it? You know, of course, I love what they did, but ah! I say, oh no, no, come on, please. Are we together? And yet there are a few that I look at and I'm like, you drew this? You say, yes sir. What do you do? You say, once in a while I just do it and I say, my goodness, once in a while I would, I, I, I would pay a thousand times for this. Nigerians wake up. Believers wake up. There is something you have that the world is looking for. And can I tell you, they will not come to you while you are growing. They will come to the refined version of you. If your pastor hides today and says he's not going to preach for five months, he's going to have to beg God in that retreat and say, God, release me to bless people because they will not let him rest. Someone's home at least will be on fire enough for them to call him and say, sir, please wake up. I don't care whether you are having a retreat in the name of Jesus. If it takes flying you to this place, oh, you need to see how men react to real value. Your desire of decades can come to you in a moment when you make up your mind to be truly valuable. These are the laws of advancement. You enter your Sabbath to the degree to which you are valuable. You rise to a point where competition is no longer a possibility. You never have planes clashing with themselves in the air. There is enough space there. Traffic is usually down. Listen to me. Listen to me. Do you know that as I'm standing here right now, I'm rounding up. As I'm standing here right now, no matter how I stretch, I can't see the island. 
No matter how I stretch, I can't see Abel Kuta Ogun State because I'm on the ground. But a star can be shining here and I can call someone in another state. He can still see the same star because it is high to the sky. If you become that star from where you are, you don't have to be moving. Anywhere people look at you, was it not a star that was shining? The, the same star called the Magi, right to that place where Jesus was. Spiritually. I know that some of us here are in ministry and you came to just honor pastor and honor the conference. God is challenging us. There is a dimension of grace, spiritual illumination, value that can be brought. When you bring something, the table of greatness is still empty. But you don't sit down for nothing. You first present your gift, then you sit down. And life must vet that gift. There is a threshold level of competence and accuracy that grants you access to sit down. Make up your mind that you will take away shame and reproach from your life and your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have to pray. Rise up on your feet, please. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so. and we're done. speak over your life and work tonight. One prayer point. Lord, I make up my mind to partner with the word and the spirit for an exceptional life. It's time for me to move forward. Open your mouth and pray. Please be tired of where you are. I came to shake your current level. There is more in you. You call it gaining momentum. Someone is praying. Thank you. 
Keeping me from moving forward. I break free now. Lift your voice and pray. Pray seriously. Thank God for what has been done in my life so far. In ministry, in business. But I declare in the name of Jesus, it's time to take a flight with destiny. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. In the name of Jesus, you are shifting to a higher level. God is planting a dissatisfaction. It's time for the globe to hear your voice. It's time for your destiny to rise. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming after me. No wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming up to me. Ah. There's no snow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming up to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. I share the burden of your pastor. He's here because he loves you. He's here because he desires to see you rise. Let me tell you this. The pride of every true leader is not his personal achievements. It's to see that the people committed to him rise by the Spirit. These laws are irrefutable. They are backed up by God's own jealousy. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It's because his time is a season for you to rise. I want to pray for you. I apologize our time is gone. But in this prayer I want you to believe. Because one of the laws that I will be sharing with you is the law of spiritual empowerment. In this kingdom it is not by might. In this kingdom it is not by power. It takes more than intention and desire. Hallelujah. Pastor, can I speak over your people? One of the graces that God has given me is the grace for speed. I want to pray that grace upon someone's life. Help them, please. Help them. I stretch my hands. Please help them. In the name of Jesus Christ, upon everyone here at Davis Christian Center, I stand by the God of heaven and I stretch my hands. At the count of three, may the mantle that makes for speed, in the name of Jesus, help them please, please help them. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Outside. Take that grace. Shabakatakatos. Speed to your destiny. Help them please. I prophesy speed to your destiny. Every delay. You are in business here. Receive speed. Help them please. Speed right now. Please bring them out if you can. Just in one minute. Bring them out if you can. Speed. Take that grace now. Whether you are an usher or not. Please help them. Very quickly. Let's save time. Speed. Outside, inside, I release that grace. Here at this conference, I shift you by prophecy. Step into a new dimension. A new dimension. A new dimension. I break the old. I break the old. For those of you who are tired, you've done your best, but it looks like this. There's no force to move you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. May the anointing that moves men to next levels, may that grace come upon you now. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. 
take that grace in the name of Jesus. Take that grace for your spiritual life. Take that grace. Hallelujah. Let me speak over your finances. Listen to me. Please listen to me. There are several levels of wealth. Three of them. There is wealth that comes by providing value. And then you are rewarded in exchange. Money being one of the rewards. There is wealth that comes. You don't sell that value. It's the reward that comes when you transform lives. But there is a third level of wealth. It's called sovereign wealth. Wealth by prophecy. It says, I'm by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. I want to speak over your finances. That you have the open-heartedness to listen. You will marvel and wonder at what my God will do for you. I stand in the name of Jesus. And I join faith with your pastor. A man that God has so helped. You don't have to bring them out again. That's all right. In the name of Jesus Christ, over your finances, I decree and declare, between now and the next 90 days, like the ark of God in the house of Weber Edom, in the name of Jesus, I shift you to strange financial testimonies. Strange financial testimonies. I speak to your business, strange financial testimonies, your family, every financial pressure, those of you in debt, those of you owing, I speak to you, come out of it now. Hallelujah. Finally, let me pray over your prayer life and your word life. No matter what goes right in your life, if your spiritual life goes wrong, that is, the, that is the control room of your destiny. An attack on your prayer life is a real attack. An attack on your word life. It says, I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. It says, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. Every dead prayer life here, that suddenly the passion to pray, the passion to wake up, the passion to fast, is no longer there. Right now I speak over your prayer.